Pick at 55 Fitness. Welcome to our 23 minute prenatal hip boot camp where moms to be can get a safe workout but with killer intensity. Today you'll need a pair of dumbbells that you can use for both upper and lower body plus a stepper so that you can be on an incline. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on push notifications so you know when our next workout is posting. And finally, give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. Let's get started. Let's get started. We've got our warm up. We're starting with high knees. It can be marching or we're bringing our feet up off the ground. So with our prenatal hit classes, we believe if you were working out in an intense level prior to conceiving, you can continue with modifications once you are pregnant. But as always, I want you to ask your OBGYN if you have any restrictions that you need to follow. Always ask first before engaging in any exercise regime. Next up, we're gonna take our feet out a little bit beyond hip distance. We're gonna squat down, air squat up. Whew. Getting those hips back, arms are flying up. Whew. So with prenatal hit, we're gonna get your heart rate up safely. We're gonna give you a great workout. And we're gonna talk through all the trimesters and what you can and cannot do. Also, check out our pregnancy miss on YouTube. Whew. Five, four, three, two, one. I want you to get an elevated platform. We're gonna put our hands here. We've got mountain climbers. And we're gonna talk about why we have an elevated platform. And if you don't have an elevated platform, it's fine if you're on the ground doing mountain climbers. But we'll discuss why you might want an elevated platform. Whew. We have five, four, three, two, one. Let's start again with high knees or marching in place. So, you just found out you're pregnant. You're maybe four weeks in a day and you're wondering, what do I do? Can I exercise? Can I lift weights? I don't even have an appointment with my doctor to get a pregnancy confirmation. It's okay. First, again, check in with your doctor first. But if your doctor says everything's okay, you're good to go. Whew, the first couple weeks, you're gonna feel great. So you can just engage in normal activity. Anything that you were doing prior to being pregnant, you can do with modifications. Whew, air squats, let's get those hips back. And take advantage of those first couple weeks. You're elated, you're nervous, you just found out you're pregnant. Your hormone levels are not increasing at a crazy rate yet. But then all of a sudden, week seven hits. And now you feel like you've been hit with a nausea train. Whew. You need to listen to your body and you need to stop, take a moment and reassess. What can I and can I not do? We're going to mountain climbers, elevated. If you struggle just to get through the day and go to work, then you might need to take a break from exercising. I know that sounds Ironic to say is the person telling you to work out while you're pregnant, but it's temporary. We want to make sure you're getting all the sleep you need and controlling the nausea. Woo, high knees again, third set of four. But if you have times of the day where you feel good, take advantage. If you were previously doing a 55 minute workout, that might not happen for you. You might only be able to get through 30. You might get through 10. Do the best you can, I promise. Once you hit your second trimester, odds are you will feel 200% better. But the first trimester is when your hormones are going crazy. They're rising exponentially every day. Whew. Your body's doing a lot of work to create that little person inside. Let your body do its job. All right, feet are a little bit out, hip distance apart, squat down. Here we go. Whew. There is one exercise I want you to avoid or one position from the moment you find out that you're pregnant and it's a supine cone position. I want you to keep squatting. So if you're on your back, 
and you're lifting your knees to your chest and you're crunching, you're creating a cone with your body. Only when you're in the supine position, this cone is what I want you to avoid. Once you find out you're pregnant, we're going to mountain climbers and at least for the first six weeks postpartum. Whew. And we'll discuss the reasonings why in either this workout or future workouts. It's why you shouldn't, shouldn't do certain things. All right, we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Last time, high knees. So let's talk about heart rate. Should you look at your heart rate while you're working out? Should you exceed 140 beats per minute? The answer is, that's not what matters. That's an old wives tale, which I address in my pregnancy mess. It's more about the talk test. Can you hold a conversation, although breathy, can you hold a conversation while you're exercising? Feet are out, Woo. air squats. You should not, on a scale of one to 10, exceed seven. So you're breathy, but you're not gasping for breath. I can't tell you what. Then you need to take the intensity down. But if you're talking like, hi, I'm gonna go grocery shopping later and buy cantaloupe. You need to take the intensity level up. Whew, let's go down for mountain climbers. So perceived rate of exertion is what is important. Whew. We're gonna finish up with these mountain climbers and then we're gonna take a quick water break. We have 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get some water, 30 seconds off which we're always going to do in these prenatal workouts. Hmm. So let's start talking about the second trimester. In the second trimester, you're starting to feel better. Week 12, 13, 14, you're starting to feel like a real person again. And you're wondering, is it okay to exercise? Yes, you can't afford to not exercise while you're pregnant, and we'll discuss why. But let's first pick up some weights. So we're gonna grab our dumbbells. Feet are gonna be a little bit beyond hip distance apart. And all we're gonna do is squat down, bringing those hips back, weight is on our heels, shoulders back, chest out. Whew. Here's why you can't afford to not work out. Your body is changing every day. You are creating a hormone called relaxin. It's coursing through your veins, literally. And it's making all of your muscles and joints more flexible, thereby more prone to injury. In this controlled environment, we can strengthen our body. But in uncontrolled environments, we don't know what's going to happen and what unforeseen forces will be coming at us. All right, we're going to take our dumbbells now. We have alternating hammer curls. So we need to be ready and strong to avoid injury. So for example, we're working on building up her glute strength when we do those squats, our quads, our hamstrings, all the muscles around the knee. Whew. Soon we're gonna work on strengthening the back. So let's lean over, hinge at the hips, bend the knees, dumbbells are facing each other, and row. So now you're working on your baby nursery. You lean over to pick up a can of paint and you strain your back. Whew. But if you're working out and you're strengthening your back, maybe you don't strain it when you turn or twist suddenly, or you're picking up groceries outside of the car and whew, you turn suddenly or you bend over and you twist your knee. But again, maybe it's not an injury because you've been working and strengthening in the studio, which is here, possibly in your living room. All right, we're gonna put those weights down. Whew. We're gonna start with butt kicks, bringing those heels to our glutes. And if you don't like the bouncing, you're just gonna quickly bring those glutes or bring those heels to your glutes. Here we go. So the reality is, is you cannot afford to not work out because you need to strengthen your body, but it also helps to reduce weight gain, which thereby reduces your chance of developing gestational diabetes while you're pregnant. Whew. It's a known fact that women who work out throughout their pregnancy have shorter labor and delivery times. I've been working with pregnant women 
for over a decade now, and over 95% are pushing for less than 30 minutes, even with their first pregnancy, if they do this workout the entire time. All right, let's squat down. Second set of three. Whew. Bringing those hips back. Whew. Really sit down into it. Weight is on your heels. Whew. So let's talk about the weights that you're using. Do you need to significantly reduce the weights that you're lifting when you're pregnant? The answer is no, but you do need to adjust accordingly. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you need to all of a sudden shift to two, three pound weights and a 10 pound barbell. But if you're feeling little, you know, some acute pain in any way, then you need to take it down, maybe 10%, 15%. So for example, if post or prenatal, you were lifting a 50 pound barbell, maybe now you lift a 40 pound barbell. Or if you normally use 20 pound dumbbells for upper body, now you use 15 or 12. We've got alternating hammer curls here. Whew. 10 seconds, then we're gonna hinge at the hips, palms facing each other, bent over rows. But you don't need to reduce significantly just because you're pregnant. You just need to modify accordingly based on how your body feels. Can you lift weights up overhead? Yes and no. So because your muscles and joints are gonna be more flexible, there's definitely more chance for injury, especially if you're elevating weights overhead. But depending on how you carry, some women aren't impacted by this. So you have to see how you feel. If also one day you're doing a squat with a press up overhead, and you feel a little twinge of pain in your upper back, in your rear delts, then you say, okay, that was my last day doing those overhead press-ups. Okay, we're gonna put the dumbbells down. We're gonna add on with this cardio. So, we have butt kicks. Woo! Here we go. And then we're gonna switch it to switch kicks. <laughs> we have eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. So we switch it just like this. And if you don't want that jumping, just kick, kick. Can you jump while you're pregnant? Yes and no. So if you're somebody who carries low, you're really stomach centric as I was, it might feel like your pelvis, your pelvis is gonna fall out every time you jump. So you're not somebody who wants to jump. But I also, again, have women who are doing box jumps up until week 39. It all depends on how you feel. If you ever feel pelvic pressure though, stop. You need to lie down, elevate your feet, drink water, call your doctor. It does not mean that something's wrong, but you should always check in with a physician. Pick up your weights, third set, then we'll get a break, squat down. So it's all about listening to your body. It's not about hitting a deadline according to your baby book that says, at week 25, I can no longer do this. Everybody is different. Every pregnancy is different. I have three children, three pregnancies. Whew, I have an 18 year old, a 14 year old, and a 12 year old. With my first pregnancy, I gained 50 pounds. With my second pregnancy, I gained 70. And with my third, I stopped weighing myself right before I hit that 70 mark because I knew I was going to exceed it. Whew. And with every pregnancy, it took me nine months to gain all that weight and nine months to lose it. And you will too. Just stay with me. Alternating hammer curls. So let's talk about the incline. Why? Again, some women carry primarily in their stomach. And at a certain point, all of that weight, when you're down in a plank position, like mountain climbers, burpees, push-ups. It's all pulling at your muscle wall and can create a little bit of a separation postpartum. So if you feel that pulling while you're pregnant, it's time to stop and elevate. So if you feel pulling right here in your rectus abdominal area, you wanna stop, incline for planks, mountain climbers, burpees. Hinge at the hips and row. And yes, it can create a temporary condition postpartum 
Usually it's completely fixable without surgery, but it's called a diastasis. We have a two centimeter separation in your muscle wall. Do not worry about it. Do not Google it right now. <laughs> okay. We row eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna add on with the cardio. So we have butt kicks. We're doing 30 seconds of each exercise and then we'll take a break. So you might be wondering, hey, where's the core? Why aren't we doing core? There are a ton of pregnancy videos out there that focus just on core and very low impact exercises. I want you to spend this time focusing on getting your heart rate up and getting a really good solid workout, switch kicks. But that doesn't mean that we're not focusing on our core. So we're gonna draw a line between our belly button, pelvic bone, where it meets in the middle. Press right here, contract, release. You can stop for a second, contract, release, contract, release. This is the muscle that I want you to be working on. Whew. If you do that, whether you're doing squats, whew. all right, we're gonna do side to side squats right now, side to side, and then we'll take a break. But if you contract that muscle in your core region during all other exercises, while you're sitting at your desk at work, while you're watching TV, while you're lying in bed, reading a book, that will work your core in the exact way you need to strengthen it for labor delivery and to support all of that extra weight. Pause, 30 seconds, and then we'll go into our final circuit of the day. Get some water. Whew. So third trimester, you're feeling like you're carrying a big watermelon around, your back's hurting, everything's hurting, you just can't wait to deliver. Should you stop exercising? No, but you might need to take more breaks. You might need to lower the weight even more. You definitely will probably not be able to lie on your back at this point. And here's why. When you lie on your back and your belly is really big, it starts to press into your vena cava, which can impede your breathing. Do not worry. Your body has an alarm system. It says, wake up, stand up. You can't breathe. You are not going to stop breathing. Your body will tell you what to do. All right, let's grab our dumbbells. Whew. So we are going to elevate those dumbbells overhead. We're gonna start with a rotation. So we're right here, we rotate up. If this is bothering you, you're going to take this into an upright row instead. Okay, so that's the alternative. Right now, we're rotating. Whew. So fat is attacking your thighs, your lower back, Whew. your glutes. Let's fight it off. We're going to sumo squats in five, four, three, two, and one, holding the dumbbells either at your shoulders or down right here. We have our feet out at nine and three o'clock. We're gonna bring our hips back, lift our heels up at the bottom, come up. I'm gonna bring those dumbbells up to my shoulders Whew. as we sumo squat. Whew. Here we go. Okay, from here, we have push-ups. Remember, this is a plank position. So if you feel that pulling in your midsection, you need to go to an incline in five, four, three, two, and one. Whew. So you can either go on an incline for those push-ups or flat on the ground. Whew. Are you contracting your core right now? Just like we talked about. You might need to work on it. That's okay. We have five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna go back to the cardio from the last circuit. Butt kicks. We're doing all three right now, then we're gonna drop off one from the top. In 20 seconds, we have switch kicks. 15 seconds, we have switch kicks, then side to side squats. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, switch kicks. Whew. 
So you need to start thinking now, what's your plan postpartum? How are you going to integrate working out into the life of motherhood? Plan now so that we have side-to-side -side squats, so that you're ready. Because what you don't want to do is say, oh, I'll just find time every day. You won't. You will find time to be with your baby. You will find time to work. You'll barely find time to eat and shower. You need to schedule your workouts like you schedule doctor's appointments, meetings for work. Make sure you have childcare. I know it's easier said than done, but we always find time to do what we really want to do. Whew. All right. We've got those press-ups with the rotation. Whew. Second set of three. This is our last circuit of the day. Whew. But you cannot start working out until you get a doctor's approval postpartum. Usually that occurs at six weeks. Lately, I'm hearing some doctors are having people with no complications, vaginal deliveries, and no episiotomy start as early as four weeks, but that's up to you and your doctor. I won't say a word. <laughs> Three, two, and one. Woo! Sumo squats, feet are out at nine and three o'clock. Bring out your heels or bring your heels up. Whew. At the bottom of the sumo squat, pulling those hips back. We've got push-ups on deck, 15 seconds. We have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Whew. Push ups. Then we have those switch kicks and side to side squats. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one switch kicks we'll go to side to side squats then we have our final set of the day and then we'll stretch and if you're wondering why we don't stretch at the beginning stretching at the beginning is like stretching a cold rubber band that came out of the freezer it will break we stretch at the end all of our muscles are warm we do cardio at the beginning Whew. side to side squats to warm everything up Whew. Please send us comments if you have questions about what you can and cannot do, whether you're trying to get pregnant, already pregnant, or recently conceived. Okay, final set of the day. Whew. But I have been teaching whew, prenatal postpartum workouts for over a decade now. Whew. So I am an expert on these workouts, I'm an expert on how to gain weight, definitely, and how to lose it safely. Whew. Okay, sumo squats. Feet are out at nine and three o'clock. And if you have questions about what you need to eat, definitely ask us, but also stay tuned for information on nutrition while you're pregnant and what to eat while you're breastfeeding. Here at Kick, we are huge advocates of breastfeeding, if it works for you. And if not, no worries. <sighs> Whew. Three, two, and one. Whew. We're going to push-ups, then we have side-to-side -side squats, and the workout's done, and the stretching begins. <sighs> we'll talk in subsequent workouts about sciatic pain, what to do with it. Whew. How to engage your toddler while you are working out pregnant. Because many of you side to side squats have a baby on board, but also got a little one at home. Okay, we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Whew. If you need to pause me, you can, but we're going to go right into the stretch taking your right arm over the top, Woo. left arm, Ooh. all right, let's take our elbows in between our knees, letting our weight shift right and left, Woo. all right, arms behind the back, Woo. 
This is a quick stretch. Whew. If you need a longer stretch, we have videos posted for you. Take your neck to the right, to the left. Woo. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Thank you for joining our 23 minute prenatal hip boot camp. Thank you for joining our 23 minute prenatal hip boot camp. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit push notifications so you know when our next videos are coming out. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Send us comments below and always tell us what you like, want to see more of, or maybe less of. Bye. See you soon.